So basically, there's a boat. Well, artists working from the GNO and uh, La Crac, the yard between uh, Reg Wilkinson and the YMCA. And everybody started yesterday and uh, really getting into it. We have a humongous beef there, and I haven't seen too much of what Sam's doing. I don't want to talk about that. No, no, production. Okay. Um, so the artists are going to be creating for four days, and then uh, we'll have the parade at uh, five on Thursday. And part of it will be to celebrate La Saint Jean Baptiste. It's a francophone celebration. We'll start with the, the sheep. So we're looking for a Saint Jean Baptiste that will uh, want to kind of drag the sheep and and uh, run the parade with us. And following that, we'll finish with the beef. But in between. We'll have uh, other people joining in, maybe La Librairie du Nouvel Ontario. We'll have also uh, La Slag and other organizations. We're hoping that we'll get uh, the union from the steel workers participating because the beef for us is like the, the, the worker. So we want to bring him out and, and celebrate him and have other people celebrate him. So it would be nice to have the steel workers there so that they can join in and be part of this. I don't know, I was just looking at, watching the news. This morning I was listening to Al Jazeera TV. Uh, it's, it's the only place that you can get some decent news. And of course BBC is trying some, but nothing out of CBC and nothing out of other major news in Canada. And it's kind of pissing me off that no one talks about it. It really feels like uh, something hap happening down south and we just sit here and say, you know, it's not my name. It's uh, just about the piece. Uh, it's my little attempt to put some uh, band-aid on, on, on my own scar as Iranian-Canadian artist working in Canada. It's like all the Iranian stories. They asking this, this the the shaman, the Sufi guy. We, why are you so quiet all the time? And they, he said, because I have two ears, one tongue. <laughs> In every part of it, it's signifying one of the layers of uh, my take on the issues that it's uh, happening right now in Iran. The fact that I'm away from Iran for 12 years and I really don't know what's really happening there and who I am. If I was there, was I one of the per people that are beating up other people or what, was I one of those people are in the street protesting? I don't know. Most of the elements of these pieces is somewhat very traditional uh, of our uh, kind of healing process. We, we go to shrines and tie a piece of fabric to, uh, to the shrine and ask for res resolution or hope for resolution. And this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to sew through these papers and let the thread loose so it start catching each other and they drawing in the space. They, uh, they getting into different layers. Right now, I'm uh, I'm working on a painting. Okay. It's acrylic, and it's very simple. However, it's about uh, the le boeuf, the ox, and uh, well, obviously we can see it. It's kind of a little story, I think, but it might change as I'm going. It's a uh, bell that are falling from the wagon because the wagon is broken and you've got the farmer that is sitting on one of the bale and he's just because at the end it's not only the ox that works hard it's the farmers also mm -hmm. so that's what it's all about I'm really enjoying and sort of embracing the idea of the artist as like the ox as an artist like uh, hardworking producing valuable uh, you know the I think like not like the stubborn part, but the diligence and 
you know, tough and just doing it, pushing through and doing what you are sort of made to do. And I feel like I'm made to create things. That's what I love and that's what I've been doing. So I'm sort of trying to embody the ox as a, a working artist. Right now. So you're working on both? The buff, the, yeah, the buff yeah. is finished, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Buffed him up. Buffed him up this morning. Okay. Yeah. I came in, we uh, got some carpet tube, sort of eyeballed where it would, the feet would be, put it up and then joined it together with some scrap wood and then did sort of a couple of crisscrosses to give it strength and then filled a bunch of um, plastic bags with newspaper and shaped them into the very sort of body lumps. Lots and lots and lots of masking. We wrapped the whole thing in sheets, uh, dumped in, um, you know, paper mache medium, and then just wrapped it so it really stuck together and had the whole thing sort of mummy sheets five. Sheets, 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 sheets. Not uh, bull sheets. Bull sheets. We, you know, stained it up with a uh, paint and then put some floor wax on it to kind of bring it back to the life a bit because it was kind of flat looking, and then buffed it. <laughs> The story right. is finished. Okay, I'm just at the moment right now, as I'm talking to you, I'm just recording um, the trains and the buses that are going by. And I'm, I've been, yesterday I recorded some of the train, like the screeching sounds. And uh, I have some samples, sound samples that I'm kind of combining. And, um, it's, and I'm gonna install it on the wall and it's going to just Hopefully I can loop it to play, and uh, so when people pick it up, they can just listen to it. Um, there's no visuals. It's just in a box, and it says, right, yeah. "Yeah," and it says, "Don't think anymore," and then people listen to the audio, and um, and then I want to have a, a a piece that goes across from it where it's supposed to make you think. So I'm gonna play around with that idea, and the idea of "Don't think anymore" can be um, "Don't think about something anymore." Or it can be that we're always, we don't think enough, or we're not. Maybe it's not so much about thinking anymore, or it's about doing something. I'm not constantly, because I'm always in your, you're always in your head, and it's about doing something, being active. So, kind of playing around with those ideas. And, uh, and I just wanted to record. And I think Vincent, I don't know what he's doing, but he's working <laughs> with um, some kind of uh, powerful walkie-talkie. <laughs> uh, I'm basically sort of liaison between the between the crack uh -huh. and the gallery, right? Yes. So I think it'll be uh, fine. I think um, I'm going to turn her around and prime the other side, and hopefully, I'm just relaxed. I mean, I don't feel any pressure, you know, and that feels lovely. You know, you're getting handprints on the ass of that. Uh, well, see. So look at how this is. I've never Well, um, I decided to take a hat because it's uh, like the, what did you say, not the bull, what, did you say a bull? No, the ox. The ox, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the ox is uh, the symbol of the worker, mm -hmm. so I decided to take the hat for okay. the worker. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to have this on my head with the horn. Yes. So, uh, and I, I'm going to stay like a woman. Mm -hmm. And because the ox is also a feminine uh, thing and uh, earth thing, mm -hmm. so I'm going to have a big uh, mammal. Did you say that in English? A mammal? Mm. Mammal. Breasts. Yeah. Breasts, okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. Or, you know, milk. Yeah. Utter? So I'm going to have uh, an udder? Not no, really. No, not an udder. No. Yeah, more uh, a breath. Okay. So to represent the Mother Earth, okay. the nourishing thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have that, that thing uh, with milk in it. Mm -hmm. So it's the symbol of nourishing 
people like Mother Earth mm -hmm. who nourishing people. Okay. Uh, and that rock is all rusted. As a matter of fact, yeah. it's so rusted, it's, it's falling apart. Yeah. And it's akin to what I've been doing with the manhole covers, which is iron, rusted iron. So I said, well, here's something that's perfect for me. It's right up my alley. Um, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll sort of explain what I'm thinking to try to tie it in yeah. With the theme, right? The year of the ox. Okay. <laughs> is I, I have the ring. You could, you could bullshit a bit. Yeah, yeah sure. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll make really it good. sound like I'm a real. Uh, oh, I really you know are. what I'm doing. Um, this is a ring that Nicole and I traded rings once upon a time. And uh, and if you look at the ring, you see that little, uh, the little um, design on it. Sort of, it's to me. I see an X. I mean, I see the okay. design, but I see an X. But I also see the circle mm -hmm. that the ring, a ring is a circle that fits on your finger. Right. So between the circle, which is akin to O, and the X, the design, which is akin to the X, you have Ox. True. So, and I'm also thinking, because when people write letters to each other, mm -hmm. They always put, well, usually put X's and O's like hugs and kisses. Ah. So that sort of ties into. Well, no, but the ox, the ox will be killed in my piece. There's no doubt about it. Um, well, because the, I mean, the ox. As soon as uh, Denine told me about the year of the ox, I, I immediately thought of myself. I've always been big. I'm a, I've, I've always considered myself like a mule, like an ox. And then I always thought of ways, ways that there are to kill an ox, right? Mm -hmm. And there's the traditional ways to kill an ox. But as I will be incorporating in my piece. There's non-traditional methods to kill an ox too. So my piece is a thousand and one ways to kill an ox, and it's, it's not so much about the slaughter of the ox, but the act of the ox. And it, for for me in this piece, me and not so much me, but just uh, there's a certain representation of me and what I'm about that is the ox, but it, it's not directly me. Self-portrait. Self-portrait. Sure, you got it. Right. You know, you got it. But yeah, that's it. A thousand and one ways to kill an ox. Okay, good. And I've already got one one part of it finished in preparation that I'll be cutting pieces out of, and then I sew it all together, together okay. almost like a quilt. Good. Right? Yeah, because yeah. Uh, I started up and I'm the founding member of the Los Angeles Quilting Society, founded in 2005. Because when I was down in Los Angeles, I started a quilting society because I was doing my pieces, pieces of canvas that I would stitch together. And one guy said one night, he goes, "Man, he goes, that really reminds me of quilts." And I was like, "Yes, it is," because many of my pieces that each little piece will have its own set of information or its own little spin in relation to the big so it almost is like quilting. That's a that's a difficult one to talk about because it's uh, the subject is terrible. It's about uh, torture device. See what happened is when I knew it was about the ox, I googled and I wanted to know stories about uh, the ox, Le Boeuf, and I came into uh, the uh, brazing bowl. And as I was writing, I realized what I was uh, reading was a torture device in the old, uh, the ancient Greek, where the king would always try to. Uh, to be like a god, so he had to find something for his people to see him as the greatest. So he had asked an artist to make a bronze bull with a door on the side. And he had asked him to do kind of like pipes that came from the belly of the bull to the mouth of the bull. And the artist well, was just happy, like me and you, happy to have something to do and get paid for it. So when he delivered the bowl, the king, when uh, the artist opened the door, the, uh, the king pushed him in, locked him in, and he wanted to see if it was working. So what he, his idea of, uh, it was about, he started a fire underneath the bowl, so that the man would roast like a chicken. <laughs> that's terrible. Oh, I know yes, that's why yes. I had to paint it because it yes. had to come out of my, my okay. mind. Yes. And when it would start to smoke in there, like uh, instinctively, the man that is trapped in there would blow on the pipe so he could breathe. But every time he would blow, 
it would oh. make the noise of a real bull. So the people, and he would do that to his parties. So that the people, it was a big event, and he would put some potpourri all around the bull so that the smell of the flesh, when the people wouldn't smell it. But the, his people thought that he was a god because he made a mechanic, uh, not an even mechanic, uh, a bull that is man-made sounding like a real bull. So he was doing that just to have fun. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I had to put it down so that I don't like to say the story too often because it, it sticks yeah, in my mind. So yeah. I did the, uh, the thing and uh, hopefully that uh, it's going to disappear. Put it yeah. It's like when they say Cl Christopher Columbus arrives with ships and uh, indigenous of uh, America, they couldn't see it. They couldn't see the ships because they had no recollection of the ship. I think we're losing the recollection of our image from nature, the way it used to. The displacement of us, me personally as human being, deciding, being in control, or centering myself, I leave some to uh, effect and happens. Painting's going quite well. I'm kind of happy. <laughs> How long has it been since you were painting? Last? Uh, six months. This is a good opportunity. Good opportunity. Thank God for the crack. I'll go like this sometimes and wave my hand. I'll fucking look at the What the fuck are you doing? Transmission coming in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Transmission yeah. coming in. Yeah. Well, and, and, and she'll say, what is it? I'll say, I don't know. When I wake up tomorrow. Well, knowing that the theme is the year of the ox, as opposed to going for the, the literal idea of an ox, sort of idea. I wanted to go with more the um, related to humans and to, since I do a lot of figurative work, <laughs> right. I wanted to go more with the feelings of, of strife, hardship, uh, reward, strength, endurance. So with those sort of ideas in mind and relate them to male and female. And yeah, I, would, uh, I, I work in only a few colors always. I, I work in white, black, gold, well, yellow and red. Okay. Those are my colors. I, I rarely stray from those. Are you working uh, in acrylic or oils? Both. I start off in acrylic and I finish in oil. And so you're out of both? No, I got the oil. That's why, but because so uh, I can't, t I can't put the oil on until I, I. I'd like to have more acrylic. I like to have more. I like house paint. I like house paint. Because the way it moves, I use roller brushes and you know, because I paint big, so I like the speeds factor of it. And I can't afford liquid oil because <laughs> it's expensive. So I like house paint, and after that, I go with the oil on top of it, what I can't afford in the bigger tubes. Mm -hmm. So I use that. But uh, I like to get some the golds, like the I like to get some of the golds and red, more red, and some house paint. So I might might pick up a couple of small cans of that. Huh. So you've been coordinating this uh, space, haven't you? Oh, it, yeah. It's quite a big job. It is, but it's, it's uh, well worth it. When you see the artists and they're diligent and they're, you know, they're working and they're excited and it makes it all worth it. The space itself is your art piece, do you know that? You know, Mary, I wasn't going to say that, but I was thinking last night I was laying there and, you know, people were remarking you know, on, on how different it looks from the first year. And I think it's quite an honor to have so many artists inside your art. You know, that was like, I was later in that revelation hit last night, I'm like, I can't be so egotistical to think it's that either. Piece. I know. I right away. I was like, wow. It's a living piece too. Yeah. And all these artists, all these creative entities in my inside my art, I'm like, wow. That's, that calls for a celebration. Cheers. I'm going to make some sangria. <laughs>